Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be painting animal stamps with brusho today. Brusho is a watercolor powder. It's a pigment that's in a container, and you shake it onto your project. Most people just do backgrounds with it, but I've been experimenting with controlling it and trying to find ways to do that. So I spread some water, just clean water, onto these My Favorite Things stamps and sprinkled the powder into the water. The water didn't go all the way to the edge because it's hard to see when you're painting with just clear water. It didn't go to the edge of the stamp, but it's easy enough to move it around with my brush and pull the color all the way out to the edge and fill in the animal completely. And I love the way the brush -o bursts into multiple colors and retains a lot of its granularity. You could do similar techniques using other watercolor powders, but a lot of those tend to kind of mush together and blend so smoothly that they, they lose that property of the granularity and the, the mixing of the colors. So I do prefer this brand. I wanted to add some shadows, so while it was still damp, I tapped on a little bit of that gray at the bottom of his head so I could spread that around. And then I'm using a clean brush for this top section so I don't continue to pull more color out any further than I already had. And then I'll add a little bit on his body as well to add some contrast to one side of it. So you can get some shading using the powders straight onto your paper. Next, I'll do this little squirrel guy with some sandstone color. This one has a number of other colors within it. And again, I just put some blotches of color or blotches of water and drop the color in and then spread them around. And I'm thinking ahead to do I want to add some shading? Where would I add it? And with this kind of a thing, it's very loose anyway, so don't stress over light sources and things. I just wanted to add a little bit at the base of his head somehow, and so I dabbed it off and then tapped on some more color to push it around right in that area at the, the bottom of the head and kind of down into the body a little. As I was looking at that, I thought, well, what if I went a really dark brown? And this is really just experimenting. That's what I would recommend you do, especially if you have only a few colors. Try different colors together and see what happens. Add a little green to a red and see what color they make when you mix the two of them. Because a lot of colors, when you add a bunch of each one together, you're gonna get brown colors. So if you're looking for a brown color and you don't have one, try some of your primaries and see if you can create other colors for yourself. This little deer, I wanted to keep his chin white underneath his chin and underneath of his tummy. And that was going to be an you know, interesting experiment to see if I could do it. So I spread the color around the back of the head and then it down across the body. And I wanted to add a little bit more color on there so I could spread it out sort of around the face, but not too far. And I had to be careful with my brush that I didn't push it too far and then start losing entirely that area that was supposed to be white. So I used a very clean brush then to try to soften out those edges. And I also realized it wasn't really as yellowish as I wanted. I wanted a little more golden color. So I took some gamboge and sprinkled that on there. You can do that in unlimited fashion. Just keep adding colors to it until it turns into what you want it to be. Our little fox, I was going to try the burnt sienna, but I also wanted a little bit of lightness in there too because the burnt sienna can get very heavy. So I also added a few little crystals of gamboge to try to make some difference in there and have some light and dark areas. In all of this, you may notice that there are a few crystals of powder that land outside of the water area. But when the powder lands on the paper and it's not wet, you can just blow it off after it's done. Now, I'm, I'm not blowing or rubbing any of the pa paper right now while it's wet because I don't want to take a chance on messing up any of the painting I've done. But when I'm all done, it's easy to dust off the excess. My little owl, I decided I wanted him to be very golden. So I'm using the gamboge there for the main part of his body. And then I'm going to add on my shadows afterward. So just paint around and move that yellow color. And then put some dark brown on the left and right. And again, the powder will not stick outside of the image. I am going to fussy cut these out, but if you were to put this onto a card directly and not 
want all that powder sitting around, as long as you keep that outside area dry, you'll be just fine and you don't have to worry about that not, not being able to be removed later. So I'm going to morph my colors and just keep kind of adding a little bit more water and pulling that color around from the, the, le the leaves, the feathers. Yes, they look like leaves. And next is this little guy, and I think he's a chipmunk, I'm going to guess, with his little stripe on his head. He could be a skunk, I'm not really sure. So I could have done him in black and white, but I decided he's just going to be a, a another guy in the same colorway as the little one up on top with a little bit of the burnt sienna mixed with the gamboge. But you can see they come out differently every single time. It really depends on how much powder you add and how much water and what combination they're in and how much you move them around and how much you dab off. There's just kind of an unlimited type of look that you can get from some of these. So I dabbed off a little bit of the color there. And since I had some on my brush, I colored the snout of my little bear now that the gray was dry. Next, I wanted to add some gray shadows in the white areas of a few of the animals. So I tapped some of the powder onto the surface that, is, that I'm working on. This is a craft assistant from Ellen Hudson. So it's a metal, shiny metal surface. And I could use it as a palette and pick up color to add onto my, my card, onto my painting. You can do that for all of this. You, you wouldn't have to actually drop the color in. I just find it a better effect for a lot of this area to, to drop the powder into water. The tummies on these little guys, I decided to paint first and then paint the arms on later after it was dry because that allows me to not drag a lot of that brown color around on the tummies. So painting the light colors works best. So I got them all fussy cut out and I had stamped a bunch of backgrounds and they're all relatively the same. I just wanted to swap around the sentiments from the stamp set, but I'm doing the same, same, same thing. I took some leaf green and tapped it into some water inside the two tree stamps that are in the set. And all I have to do is spread them around. And I was wishing I had retained more of that yellow color. If I had not spread this around at all, there would have been some interesting yellow in there. And that didn't happen, but looking at it now on the video, I'm like, oh, that was so nice. I liked having that color. So you can, again, dab off and then add more color back on because I wanted some more contrast in my tree. You can add it to just part of it and move it around with water, whatever you'd like to do to create the look that you're looking for on your card. For the ground now, I decided I was gonna do something a little different and I painted on a little bit of water Put in a tiny bit of moss green. Moss green is a very dull color, but I didn't want something that was going to be really screaming, so the, the moss worked really well for that. And I just kind of made a hillside for the trees to stand on and used a lot of water. The more water you use, the softer you can make it. And after I heat set that so it was all completely dry, then I added some dark brown into the tree trunks. I really only had to add a few crystals into the base and even those crystals that are off on the left there blew right off after it was done. Just a, a quick bit of breath and that'll all clean up. And then I was able to add on all of my images onto the card bases that are now finished as well. So between all of it, look how cute. I just used a few little pop dots to put my animals onto my cards and I put them onto some craft card bases. And the sentiments in here will get you through a lot of different needs for cards. So there's birthday sentiments, love sentiments, friend sentiments, and you are so dear to me. Darling, darling, darling. Love how the little deer actually came out. Really beautiful. I tucked the sentiments down by the trees as much as I could to sort of create a focal point on the card and allow all that color and everything to be in one area. Lots of white space on these to keep them light and fresh, but still so much fun. In my little scenes, the little vignettes created and the small sentiments off to the side. So these were really easy to assemble a whole bunch of cards all at once by doing all of the brush -o work and then later on being able to do the assembly. There's a couple more videos using some brush -o if you're interested in seeing some more stuff. 
would be happy to share more with you. If you'd like to hit that subscribe button, you're welcome to do that. There's more information on the blog and lots of supply links, etc., in the description down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Go out and create something amazing on your own. I would love to know that this inspired you. Take care. Bye-bye.